So we're here back at DevOps, and I'm here with uh, Ilya Grigorik, who's uh, here uh, talking about performance and Chrome DevTools, yep. and performance of front ends and web apps, so welcome. Thank you. Um, you were covering uh, two things. First of all, in the university session, how to uh, um, make uh, websites performant. Yep. And um, it, performance is kind of a, a black art, I think, to a lot of people. So, um, and browsers at the same time are pretty uh, complex things, are almost like an OS. Yep. So should people try to understand how it's built, or are there any low-hanging fruits or a methodology to get your things to work? So it's, really it's both, right? Uh, you should always go for the low-hanging fruit because by definition those are the low-hanging low fruit. But I think uh, in general if you want to have, if you want to build an application that is performant over the long term, you need to understand how the mechanics of your operating system work and you, know, you mentioned that the browsers are increasingly becoming like an operating system they absolutely are right you have networking you have graphics you have everything in between right like there's literally not a computer science problem that we're not like pushing boundaries on in yeah. a modern browser that's not there so uh, that was in large part what the session was about of course you can only fit so much into three hours but nonetheless it was like oh, three hours of still quite like, a bit. here's how the browser works yeah. Right, and people can find your slides online, and if they Google them, I'm, I'm sure That's we'll right. have a link somewhere yeah. so people can yeah. find them. They're, I think they're very useful, even with us, and it will be on Parallels as well for people to to, to watch. Um, so, um, how about uh, things like page speed or using CDNs or DNS lookups is an obvious thing people yep. don't yep. always look into. They're, these are all good things. So these are all techniques, right? These are all. Like it's one component of a larger picture, right? right? So we kind of in the web performance community, if you will, we kind of have this distinction, which I don't think is actually necessarily even fair, which is backend versus front end performance, which is like the, the stuff that happens on your server and then all everything that the browser does. Whereas I like to take kind of like a holistic picture and say like, well, the lifetime of a page or your app or what have you, um, needs to take into account both, right? Because sometimes maybe your app is blocked on DNS, and then the question is, how do I find out? How do I measure it? Um, I guess kind of the other meta point that I like to make about performance is a lot of people treat it as a technical metric. Okay. It should be a business metric. Performance is a feature. Like there are products out there where speed is a feature. Think of Google search. Like right. speed is a feature, absolutely, right? Yeah. And you should design for it as such. So if you can connect speed and performance to your business or bottom line metrics, and in fact, you know, I've shown a number of case studies from other companies outside of Google where they see a direct correlation between how fast the page loads and my conversions or bounce rates or and everything like that, right? If you can show that to your CEO, CFO, your team even, right? I mean. That that's a viable metric as opposed to just being being like on a weekend I'm going to spend my 20% time optimizing the page. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting to see how people actually start using Chrome DevTools as more like development tools, not just the afterthought, the tool you bring up and to, you know, fix performance after you've built it. So, people are spending more time in in tools that just the ones provided in Chrome. Yeah, I think, uh, so that was kind of my second talk, which is uh, the whole premise is the browser is probably one of the most well-instrumented platforms that we have today. Um, and you may just not realize it yet. That was kind of the tagline, right? And uh, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can do detailed network debugging, look at the graphics pipeline, look at the low-level networking. And in fact, you have to. Like once you actually get into the weeds of like what, what is the browser doing, that's what you need to understand. Okay. And it, it is almost like an IDE at this point. Yeah, true, true. Uh, I see a lot of people, a lot of developers actually using it as such. Um, so uh, you actu actually looked at the DevOx website as well, and uh, yep. you have uh, <laughs> a few things to share with uh, our friends organizing the, the conference and, r and running this website. Uh -huh. what, what, what kind of things did you find on, so uh, and are they any, are they typical of things you find? So elsewhere? they were actually typical, and I have to say, the DevOx site actually was pretty good. Uh, all okay. things considered, so uh, no complaints there. But, so some interesting takeaways. An average page on the internet today is about one megabyte in size. One meg. Um, I find this number surprising, right, the first time I heard it. And it's composed of over 80 requests. So one page, but there's 80 resources, images, JavaScript, CSS, that need to come in to compose the page. Wow. And we're connecting, on average, to over 30 servers. Yep. to fetch all of that data, right? And of course, as users, we expect all of this to happen <coughs> instantaneously. It's like, yes, connect to 30 servers, compose all of this, and just like instantly display it. Um, I think for DevOps, if, I, if memory serves, it was, some, it was more requests. It was like 140 requests. 
Yeah. Uh, but it, nonetheless, it was structured well, so it loaded pretty fast. Okay. So they, they so did a good job. Somebody must have been using from tools. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you also covered something about the difference um, between latency and bandwidth, and and mm -hmm. how developers should look at it. How it's right. it's really important. Yeah. That, so this is a big aha moment, I think, for a lot of people. Where um, you know, you turn on your TV, you watch the commercials for your ISP, and it's like get the latest 4G, highest speed, whatever bandwidth connection, yep. right? And uh, oftentimes, I think we we think of speed and perform performance on the web as just bandwidth. Like, can I get a bigger pipe, if you will, to my house? Because that'll solve all problems. You right. know, if, if we have bigger pages, so what? We'll just get more bandwidth. The problem is bandwidth doesn't actually help at after a certain point right. uh, with web browsing. So as we said, we have 80 requests. Uh, we have many d parallel connections. And if you kind of go into lower levels of how TCP works, we don't actually use all the bandwidth at the beginning of the TCP connection. So you're actually bound by latency. And unfortunately, latency is not changing. We have this annoying thing called the speed of light, <laughs> and it like we just can't figure out how to go any faster. So, because of that, uh, we need to pay attention to latency. This is you mentioned CDNs. Like right. the whole point of a CDN is to get a server closer to the user, such that we can terminate the connection faster. Like right. that is the prime point there, right? And just understanding why you need that is very important. Okay. So you know, if you're running a site here in Europe, and your server is in I don't know, US, because you're using some cloud provider, you're penalizing all of your users by a significant margin, like 150, 200 milliseconds. Right, and eventually you're not making as much, as much money as right. you Right, and, and you pro in all likelihood, your bounce rates are higher and other yeah. things, so. So uh, speaking of uh, all of this, you know, how much of that is uh, going into innovation and standards? I mean, I hear about HTTP2 maybe coming along. Yeah, Can you say yeah. a word about that and how maybe that was inspired by uh, yeah, so work actually at Google? One of, the, one of the efforts that you know, we've been sponsoring at Google and working very closely with is the W3C Web Performance Group. So this, this is a group that was started a couple of years ago. And it has already created a number of standards like navigation timing. So navigation timing allows you to get instrumentation data out of the browser for things like, so how long did the DNS lookup take? Right. Um, you couldn't access this data maybe even a year ago, right? So we have this now, and you mentioned HTTP2. So th that was also in some part driven by Speedy. So this is a kind of experimental protocol we deployed at Google, um, and within Chrome, it's available in Chrome, Firefox, and Opera now. And uh, so trying to is try it fair to say that it's used in most uh, services. So if you're using Chrome, use a Chrome browser and, and access a Google so service, yep, it's actually yep. uh, so Google servers uh, speak Speedy, Chrome right. speaks Speedy. So if you're accessing our, our service, so if you're reading Gmail or doing Google searches via HTTPS, you're running over Speedy. You're not running over HTTP. Right. Now here's a caveat: Speedy is not a replacement for HTTP. Speed is so HP is still the same, but we kind of change one layer below, okay. basically how we send the messages on the wire. Yep. And by virtue of changing that, we can actually make the transport more efficient. So we can uh, push multiple resources over the same connection. So the HTTP 2.0 effort is basically that, or at least uh, we have a charter now for that working group, the ITF working group, which is going to take Speedy version 2 of the protocol that we designed and use that as a starting point. So in the coming year or a couple of years, hopefully we'll standardize it and you know release it as HTTP 2.0. Okay, great. That's um, exciting to hear. And the world will be a better place. Of course, that's, <laughs> that's what we uh, all aim for. Um, <laughs> let me uh, close with a final question. Uh, what about mobile? Uh, about uh -huh. in, in this whole picture, that's probably some place where you know performance is as important, if not more important, than yeah. uh, desktops and typical browsers. You have also browsers there, and tools are actually available to. To yep. help you with that, so what are we so doing? So everything we just talked about applies to mobile, uh, especially bandwidth and latency. So of course, ban we still have room for improvement in terms of bandwidth on mobile. Okay. Having said that, latency is much worse than desktop for a number of reasons, which we we won't get into here. But it only makes it more important that we design with efficiency in mind, like reusing connections, leveraging all of the caches, and and all the rest. Um, we also are building, I think. We are building, but we still need a lot better tools for mobile. So for example, in Chrome, we have remote debugging. Yep. And this is very important, not just because you can connect to your phone and, and kind of pull the data out of it, but you can actually simulate and use the wireless network on your phone to f like feel how the page looks or how, how it downloads, if you will, or even how it executes, right? Like 
We develop our apps, mobile apps, on our desktop. We yep. run it on an emulator, which is still running on your like beefy whatever exactly. quad yeah. core with whatever graphics card. Then you put it on your little phone, right? And it's still mm -hmm. underpowered, comparatively speaking. Like th these things are getting uh, yeah. very good in terms of computing power and all the rest, but nonetheless, orders of magnitude less, and then it just feels very different. Right, so uh, you can, with Chrome DevTools, you can now use all the same tooling to debug on your phone, which is awesome. I think we still have more room for improvement though. Okay, great, so looking forward to those improvements as well. Yeah. Thanks for uh, taking the time. Thank you.